Hello, good afternoon. Sorry for the delay. It's Soulful Sunday, so I wanted to share a mindful meditation with you. I started out setting up outside because it was so pretty in my garden. I, I like to share my yard and that beautiful green, that lush green nature, the best place to really reconnect to our inner being, ourselves, our soul. But unfortunately, as you can see out my window, the rain is trickling down, and I got washed inside, literally about the time I was going to hit the go live button. So show me some love and reach out to me. Let me know who's out there because I'm not seeing any, any activity here. Is there anybody out there? Hello? I see somebody popped up. Ah, Satnam, Karen. Bon pomeriggio. So here's what I was reflecting upon this morning in my personal daily meditation. I was reminding myself that during the time that it took for me to slow down, and to sit with myself, I also had to have this massive epiphany, and it's humbling, that when I didn't think I couldn't sit still, telling me was how, how difficult it was for me to be alone with myself. So how often is it that you find you can't sit by yourself and be alone with you? Are you happy with where you are in your life? <laughs> it's interesting because we don't realize but meditation brings you closer to the source of who you are. What it is is it's tapping into your divine being, that true essence and that's scary because that's also acknowledging the oneness, the all that is. When you think of a higher power, doesn't matter what faith you follow or believe in, whether you call it God, source, consciousness, universe, all that is, I am, what you're really connecting to is you is the same. I am that. I am. And it's, it's humbling in the sense that you have to have that moment of self-actualization, that moment of self-realization. I tell you what, I don't know what I did. I kind of um, mixed up. So if I accidentally invited you to join the screen, you can click off, um, turn off the video, because I don't know how I did that. I, I little flub up my own personal lesson in Facebook technology today. Uh, but returning back to what I was just saying, the connection to source, the going within, requires deep, awareness and acceptance that you are not separate that you are source take that in for a moment because that's also saying you are God or universe or source or all that is and most people have been programmed to think I'm not worthy that's not possible. That's a separate entity. That is different than myself. It is something bigger than me. You don't want to define it as you because the teachings of many places, even growing up, I was raised Catholic. So it was God and me. And it was a personal relationship for me growing up, but it was the recognizing that I'm not separate. 
and that if you remember God made me in his image is the same to say I am God because to be of a source you came from that source so it's tapping in to an area we all need healing in because most people don't feel worthy they don't feel like what is inside of them is love a lot of people actually deny themselves and they're afraid to show what's inside of them so when they do see somebody who's alive who is in spirit inspiring right take note I'm getting the sign okay you can't get any stronger than that one okay maybe maybe you can <laughs> I'm not gonna choose I'm not gonna challenge it but into me I see the intimacy that you find within yourself is going to be the most important relationship you ever find. Don't keep looking for it outside of yourself. Don't look for it in another. Because the patterns that we've been set in motion for generations and generations, are t it's time to break those. And if you want a true intimate relationship with another, you need to work on the one with yourself. And when you can sit by yourself and be happy with where you're at, you're going to attract people like flies because everybody wants part of that essence. It's just the majority of people don't realize they have it within themselves. The majority of people are not necessarily going to recognize that everything that they desire is right here, right now because it's the opening up to receiving it, but also allowing it and giving it to yourself first. So relationships always tell us about ourselves. Last year, for example, I was going through my own transition where I had to recognize some of my old patterns and relationships. I'd spent several years celibate, not dating, and the day I decided to open up and go, okay, I'm ready. I think I'm ready to allow somebody else into my life. I'd like to have that union again. That opens up another can of worms because you can do the inner work, but now it's about the applying that inner work with another person because they're going to bring up the unhealed areas you may not have touched upon during the time you were doing the work. And I can tell you, it brought up some old stuff for me because I, I craved and I desired and I, I missed human touch. I missed kissing. I missed hugging. I missed just embra being embraced and embracing. And what it did for me was it made me aware of a slight desperation within me that I was building an individual up to be more than what they were instead of accepting them where they were at. I could see into their soul so I could see their potential and see the essence of who that individual was. But what I wasn't seeing was where they were in their physical space, whether they had self-worth and self-love and extended that I realized later that my monkey mind would pick up and I'd start to get the old patterns of they're not responding in the way I want them to, they're not showing up the way I want to, and my old way of handling that was, I'm out of here, I'm gone, I'm gone, okay? This in Italian means, I'm gone, I'm, I'm out of here. Because the fear of rejection will cause you to run, and that was a deep-seated pain within me. I feared being rejected, but I would first reject in order to not be rejected. So I'd beat him to the punch because that's a strong ego, right? So we can say we want something, but we can just as easily reject what it is we want by not allowing ourselves the courage and the vulnerability to show up to it. So needless to say, I'm just going to fast forward through all that. It helped me to really dig deep 
it really got me in there and I'm so so grateful for that, that person although I compromised my integrity and my being my body as a result I learned and there is no such thing as a mistake it's all part of path your path it's all part of what your soul wants to experience because without those contrasts without having been put back in a situation where I could go oh that's right I've been here before let's change it up let's not fall into the old way of being so those times when maybe your old pattern like in my case might have been to get upset and you know like my family it's very it was very you know boisterous the voice octaves who could get in the word edgewise louder than the other it wasn't about being right wasn't about being happy it was about being heard and that's another one we tend to forget we all want to be heard so in the case of this situation I ultimately sat with myself sat with the discomfort and had to actually confront it and ask it what is this telling me about myself wow okay I'm desperate for attention I'm starved for affection so how was I relating that to myself toward myself I was expecting someone else to give me something I could already give myself hmm so that's what I want you to all kind of sit with yourself on do you feel you like yourself? Do you like your own company? Do you like you? Do you like who you are? Who you've become? Because if you don't, this is all the more reason to be compassionate, kind, and loving toward yourself. And that when you feel the resistance to sitting alone or being alone, this is when you need meditation the most. This is going to help you the most heal, right? And when you can sit with yourself, don't judge the thoughts, just allow them. Because that's what meditation is all about. It's all about letting the thoughts drop in and pass through, drop in and pass through. When you attach to one thought, you become obsessed and you don't allow that energy to continue to move that's when it lodges in the body the more you resist the more it persists so relationships are really key for all of us and that relationship with yourself is going to be the most important one and you need to nourish and cultivate it more than any other relationship out there and not use others as excuses for where you're at because what you're going to find the more you take responsibility and ownership of who you are from the inside out, toroidal, right, in and out, it's, it's constantly coming in the same direction, right? You're going to find that your courage, your vulnerability to be who you are, to tap into that inner guru, is going to be what strengthens every relationship external to you that when you can accept within yourself the impatience of the patience you will be able to also accept it within others I love the thunder oh my gosh it's, it's just what a better time to meditate right when it's raining and when you've got the rumbles and the energy moving and when the rain falls it creates a negative ions the negative ions actually clear the energy clear the space right so even in the morning you always see the dew outside that is the cleansing for the new day so the the real powerful epiphany for me was that when I would be with other people and I couldn't sit with myself in a meditation I would have to recognize that I didn't like myself back then and I was looking for other people to validate me and when you look for other people to validate you you're only setting yourself up for failure s sadness suffering dis-ease discomfort and, and it's like a drug because if people keep on feeding you what it is you need 
you're going to keep going back for more. But when you tap into that inner wellspring within you, you don't need to go anywhere else. I was having a friend with friendly conversation the other night about how, you know, I'm good with where I'm at. I don't need to go and find someone else. And how good does that feel when you are in your personal power? You maybe you harm it a little. That's there's nothing wrong with that because we again we go through phases in our lives. We're always either expanding or contracting. We need to expand and reach out and touch others in ways that are energetic expressions of exchange and energy because it's the ebb and flow of life. Or we're contracting. It's when we go within and we're building up the prana, the life force, the wellspring, the vitality, right? And the beauty is it's all perfect. So there's no perfect way to do a meditation. It's just the fact that you show up and you sit with yourself. You love yourself enough to make the time for you every single day. I don't care if it's a minute, two minutes, 30 seconds, but it's all about showing up and being present. Can you do that? So, I hadn't actually planned anything in particular for meditation because I like to see what unfolds. And so if you have never done Kundalini Yoga, this is going to be a treat. I'm actually going to take you from start to, to finish. What we do is we tune in with the mantra. And the mantra is Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. And what that is, is your connection to the higher source of all that is. It's plugging in to the electrical light or not light, well, the electrical light source, the radiant force of all that is. So, Om Namo Guru Dev Namo translate, I bow to the inner divine, the guru within me, that resides within me, to all the gurus and the masters, all that came before me. And it sets the tone. So we, we chant it three to five times. You inhale. And it sounds like this. So inhaling, I go. Om. And the ong vibrates in the conch, the conch, like, you know, this is this big cranial covering and it creates a vibration within the cranial skull, okay? So you ong, you ong, you don't touch the tongue to the top of the mouth and it creates this vibration, this reverberation. And then the namo, ong, namo. So if you're ready, I want you to close your eyes down, start rubbing your hands together. This is how I start every class, okay? Rubbing your hands together, we're creating this friction, this energy, this vibration, right? Because it's energy and motion, everything. And we're all healers, and the hands are an extension of the heart and the lungs, the life force, the heart space. Everything we do with the hands is from the heart, is love, right? You should always do everything from the heart. And so closing your eyes down, focusing on the third eye point, I want you to tap into your body and notice any sensations in your body and say, okay, deep belly breathing into the pelvic floor, up through the stomach, the diaphragm, the chest lifts, and then the exhale, the chest lowers, the diaphragm goes in, and you squeeze in that last bit pushing out the stagnant air at the navel center. I want you to take the hands and place them anywhere you may feel you need extra attention, any dis-ease in your body, send it, that prana that you breathe in, 
and then exhale the tightness that's in that space. So the, on the inhale, you're sending at the pranic life force, the energy to heal it. Hands are extension of the heart and healing hands you have. Really pay attention to the sound of your breath. Relax into your body. Relax those areas of tension. Breathe into them. And as you're ready, I want to take you to take your hands, place them in palm, in palm to palm, at heart center. Thumbs are in and up at the sternum, right there at that nice little notch. They fit perfectly. Roll the shoulders up and let the shoulder blades glide down the back. The shoulder blades actually help to align the shoulders. Then you want to ensure that you're, you're reaching up through the crown of the head, stacking vertebrae by vertebrae from the base of the spine all the way up through the crown of the head. The ears are over the shoulders, shoulders are over the hips. Inhale together to synchronize the breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And on the next inhale, we begin. Inhale. Om. Suspend the breath, relaxing the body but holding the breath. Exhale, slowly release the hands in the lap, right palm and left, or in Gyan Mudra, index and thumbs touching on your knees. Just sit here and go within. Just start paying attention to the sound of your breath, breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Breathe deep down into the pelvic floor, dispersing the energy all throughout the body and allowing any tightness or resistance to fade away. Expanding in through the belly, the diaphragm, and the chest lifting up through the clavicle. And then the chest lowers the diaphragm and the stomach. And that navel point pulls in and pushes out the last of any stagnant, stagnant air. Listen to the sound of your breath. On the inhale, you can mentally chant Sat. On the exhale, imagine the sound Nam. Sat Nam is truth is my identity. It's 
a nice way to distract the mind from any thoughts that may drop in.
So bring some awareness back to your body. Notice your quality of thoughts, any sensations in your body that you're having. If you need to move, you can wiggle the fingers and wiggle the toes. Maybe you need to readjust your body. And slowly, as you're ready, open your eyes. Coming back. So I hope that was a nice, quiet, just a simple breathing meditation, just a simple tapping in to you. And if you happen to have a notepad and a pen, it's one of the things that I like to really have nearby me at all times, something to write down anything and everything that comes into your mind that you feel whether it's a sense of urgency to attend to emotions that come up insights into yourself because that's what you'll find the more you sit with yourself the more you're going to learn who you are where you came from and the present that your life is and that you are a gift you're not just a gift from God, you're a gift for God. So when you fully embrace your life and you are fully present in it, in the moment, and sharing your authentic self without filters, without needing to compare, judge, or live up to another's expectations, you're actually building up the blessings for those around you because when you lead by example you live by example others want some of that as well and when they see it in you it gives them hope it reawakens within them it's like we touch each other's hearts one by one when we open our own so when you can open your own heart and love yourself more you're actually doing it for others at the same time. So the energetic exchange that occurs, no matter who you encounter, no matter what reaction or response you get from another person, they're giving you a taste of what it is that's going on with them. Sometimes it will trigger people. But see, the more you do this work, you're going to recognize and have compassion for the other person because you will see where you've been and your own triggers will be healed because you will no longer be attached to the drama and the trauma and all the issues that may have happened in your life. So I just wanted to read this by Carl. Why do we keep our mouths closed when breathing, inhale, and exhale? Because it's more controlled. When we use the mouth, it's going to be more for detoxification. It's, um, it's a good way to get rid of the stagnation. Yes, there's a great app called Private Diary. I use the notes on my iPhone. But inhaling is gentler. Carl, if you go through and watch the breath video that I did, when you inhale through the nose, it's more controlled. It's gentler on the lungs because there's the filtration that goes through the nasal passage as well as the throat. When it comes through the mouth, you take in too much air. If you're inhaling through the mouth, I'm explaining. When you take breath in through the mouth, it's actually harder on the lungs and a little bit, it's a little bit harsh on the psyche. So it can actually bring up stuff sometimes which is why when we do rebirthing exercises in kundalini, there's a lot of mouth exercises, you know, mouth breathing, because it's meant for detoxifying and to really work through stuff. But you also have to be aware of this. And this is what's so important about keeping a journal, keeping a diary, is you get to watch your progress. How did you feel today? 
write down in the in your journal what came up for you because whatever it is is something it's meant to be worked on right so I like to tell people you know emotions energy in motion and emotions and energy needs to stay in motion so when things surface it's meant for your attention where energy goes where attention goes energy flows and nine times out of ten where you've been neglecting or, or suppressing emotions that is going to surface and until you feel it you can't heal it so you have to feel it to heal it you have to allow the completion of the cycle and when you suffocate it from the point where it was going through its momentum and okay I, I got to that crescendo but I stopped it because I didn't want to be bothered what you've done is created that blockage it becomes becomes lodged in us it's where so much of the disease comes into our our physical bodies is is a reflection of the mind and the body responds to the mind so whatever is going on up here is going to reflect in the physical so it's really important to tap into the breath thank you everyone I, I really appreciate you showing up today uh, the breath is going to be what heals you whatever ails you you can heal it with the breath but you need to be aware and it's all about working on you because I can tell you what worked for me but like we say in Kundalini Yoga it's the yoga of awareness through your personal experience so I can share my personal experiences I'm not a doctor so I can't tell you what's gonna work for you if go inside to know what's gonna work for you there is nobody who can tell you what you need there's it's all inside of you so today I am so grateful that you all showed up and even if you're watching this later that's even better because you can watch this over and over again this is the beauty of Facebook live is they archive these videos so you can always go back and check them out so I'm grateful because even if it rained outside and we didn't get to do this outside we still got a chance to spend this time together and the more you commune with like minds you raise that that you elevate that vibration and again I'm all about sassy vibes because we all got a little sassy on us in us <laughs> on us sometimes too and we need to up our vibes and get our sassy on so if you have any questions let me know the kundalini yoga actually ends with a blessing of the long time sunshine and a long sat nam to close out we'll do that real quick i'll give you the words it's may the long time sun shine upon you all love surround you and the pure love within you guide your way on we sing this through two or three times and then we do a long satna so if you'd bring your hands together with me thumbs in and up at the sternum shoulders rolling back ears over the shoulders shoulders over the hips elongating up through the crown of the head from the base of the spine each vertebrae perfectly stacked one on top of the other inhale to sink exhale release May the long time sun shine upon you. All love surround you and the pure light within you guide your way on. So inhale to begin this. It's kind of a song. May the long time sun shine upon you. All love surround you. And the pure light within you guide your way on may the long time sun shine upon you all love surround you and the pure light within you guide your way on one more time may the long time sun shine upon you Gu 
all of surround you and the pure light within you guide your way on two more times guide your way on guide your way on inhale for one long satnam Thank you very much. Peace to all, love to all, light to all. I hope you enjoyed today's mindful meditation on the Soulful Sunday. And I'm going to show you what it looks like outside of my house with all that rain. I'm sorry, I had a little giggle because the rain just started pouring in the middle of the song. And so, yeah, I'm going to turn this around and show you what's going on.